Hello, everyone. I'm Michael Clark. Um, this is Facts at Five. Welcome to the uh, LTV Media Center in Wayne Scott, New York. We are here on Channel 20 in the town of East Hampton, or you can stream us live at ltveh.org. Thank you so much for tuning in. Morgan, welcome. Good to see you again. Good to see you, It too. seems like seems I just saw you yesterday. It seems like I saw you five seconds ago. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> um, so we're going to... Let me just tell you a couple of things that we're going to be talking okay. about today. Uh, first, we'll hit it off with the, the fast facts, as we usually do. And then uh, we're going to talk a little bit about New Yorkers in general. All right. All right? And then uh, perhaps a few acts of kindness, and then suddenly we're all done somehow. Yeah. But there's, there really are a lot of things that we can talk about. Um, there's a, a lot of great things that have been happening with the government um, so far, on paper at least. Right, right. Um, so um, we're on the verge of the, the $2 trillion uh, virus rescue package, as they're calling it. And um, which is going to aid businesses, workers, and healthcare systems, and in fact is the largest uh, this type of relief in U.S. history. Yeah. Um, one of the things that they're they're going to be focusing on is uh, expanded unemployment. And um, you had a little bit of information yeah, the, on Yeah, one it? of the interesting things about this is that gig workers, what they're calling gig workers or what people are calling gig workers, which are hourly workers, they're actually included in this. So people who, um, I know a lot of people here work two jobs. They might be hourly um, in one. Maybe they couldn't do that job. Um, so now you can actually apply for relief um, with, with New York State unemployment. Okay. So would that be musicians too? You know, I, I don't know. I think he, I, I have no idea how it works. We should look into exactly how it works. If you have to yeah. pr prove that you make this amount of money, I know the word gig like instantly. That's what right, I think right, of that's too. What I thought. You know, um, but I, as far as I know right now, it's for people who have hourly jobs. I don't know if it's potential income. It could be. Right. Regardless, I think that this bill is actually looking at propping up people who are not just the corporations. I think it's a it's a pretty partisan bill. Okay, great. And yeah, it's, uh, I'm glad they finally came together yeah. on it. And there is, uh, in addition, there's a uh, $367 billion program for small businesses in order to keep people working. Right. Um, and and the, the, the real rough outline of this is, is about $1,200 per person uh, for those making under $75,000 a year. Um, $2,400 per couple, um, as long as they're under $150,000 a year, and then an additionally $500 per child. Right. And as of, as of the recording of this, that has not been completely ratified yet. It right? hasn't been signed by the president, I guess. Right. Yet. Well, so this is, what the, this is what the deal was, that they came to agreement on midnight last night. Right, and they're feeling pretty confident that's yeah. going to happen. Um, so... What, what else we have on a, on a local level in terms of... Uh, well, we had huge news yesterday. When I, I know we both were separately watching the um, coronavirus task force. Right. And I was as surprised, maybe, as anybody when um, Dr. Bricks was speaking, and she said, and I have this from the transcript, but to anyone, they're very concerned about New York. It's an epicenter of this virus. Um, and she said... But to everyone who has left New York over the last few days, because of the rate of the number of cases, you may have been exposed before you left New York, meaning New York City. Right. Everyone, everybody who is in New York City should be self-quarantining for the next 14 days to ensure that the virus doesn't spread to others, no matter where they have gone, whether it's Florida, North Carolina, or out to far, far reaches of Long Island. Hello. That's us. <laughs> so apparently, and then Dr. Fauci said right after her, um, I just want to reiterate what Dr. Br Burks said. Sorry, I said Bricks before. Burks. I have it mixed up in my head. Um, People want to get out of New York City. They're going to Florida. They're going to Long Island. They're going to different places. The idea, if you look at the statistics, it's disturbing. About one um, per thousand of these individuals are infected. So what we saw a couple of weeks ago when people came in to their second homes, right. which they are completely allowed to do, sure. that we had a great influx of people. I think that there's a lot of chatter on social media about what this means for us out here, us year-rounders and locals who, um, you know, we're worried about. Not as much the food anymore. That seems to have stabilized right. a little bit. Right. But 
if there's a huge virus load to take care of, what's going to happen at the hospitals, et cetera? And I think that um, I think that's fair. And I think that there would be I noticed yesterday that when I was driving, because I drive from home to here, and I saw that there was many more people on the street. Today, not so much. I think maybe the people, who the New Yorkers who came out here, maybe have realized that it's a little, we need to, everybody needs to be staying at home. A little bit more diligent. Yeah. yeah. I noticed that last weekend myself when, when uh, I went out to uh, get some pet food. And again, they brought it to my car, which was wonderful. And um, but in driving back, seeing all the people walking up and down the street and then just recognizing that, um, you know, we just need to be a whole lot more careful this time of year. We're just not used to it in terms of driving. We got to slow down. We got to because people are just wandering aimlessly. Well, hopefully there won't be as much. Right. And, there, and the village also has asked and the um, village police have asked. This is from the village of East Hampton. The village of East Hampton understands that some members of the public will visit our beaches and parks. Of course we want to. If you do so, we ask that you practice social distancing and take the necessary precautions to protect yourself and others by staying at least six feet from each other and avoiding close contact with anyone who's sick. And if you are sick, stay home and do not come out to these facilities. And, of course, the village wants to make sure that this happens so we don't have to close these places down because right. we all need to get out of the house. Right. Absolutely. But we need to do it safely. Sure. And, and, and you know, this leads to the question, like, how much are New Yorkers really getting it, right? It, it's, it's, you know, there's, there's a whole lot of variation in terms of, of what you're seeing. You're seeing, and um, in talking to our friend Angela, in, in, who's in New York City right now, and she's seeing the same thing, and, and in fact, angers her to see three people on a corner talking. There's right. no uh, Van Skoyak between them. There's no right. six foot between them, six right? Feet, yeah. right? Yeah, and um, so... I, I, and I don't know how you drive that home. You can't. You certainly can't enforce it, right? I, I, it, you know, people just have to learn and understand that this is this is the new reality. Well, this is. We are both native New Yorkers. Right. We are both native Long Islanders. You know how hard it is to tell us to do anything. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> are we going to listen? Maybe. Yeah. So I think that. But in this case, we're talking about people's lives. Right. And this, the more that we socially distance now the more that our economy will be able to come back when we need it to this right. summer. So it's almost like we just have to take this bitter pill right now in order to um, to see the fruits later. I thought it was Easter. Oh, whatever. It's not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I also want to give huge props to the town of East Hampton, who, if you go to their website today and you click on the coronavirus update, they have fantastic information in their press releases. So that's ehamptonny.gov. The the website's at the end, and it has an excellent, excellent um, updates. And I will say, with the with the uh, the announcement that was made by the East Hampton Police, that they're they're doing an incredible job, oh I think, yeah. in what they have. They're you know they're obviously working at a at a time where they're working with a winter force, um, with a summer crowd, as we've discussed before, and um, are handling it in the best possible way that they can, I think. And um, I, I think the quote at the end of their um, their, the message that they got out is very, was, was a really good one, saying, be a good neighbor, a responsible citizen, and self-quarantine now. I mean, that, that just about covers it, and I'm not sure how much more that they can possibly do about that. Right. And, and maybe, maybe peer pressure is the way. Maybe, maybe we all need to, well, I think to there's jump a part in of and that. say, what, what are you doing? Aren't you embarrassed? Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> What are you doing? Yeah. You know? And speaking to that, I just I think we should state that at LTV there are usually about ten people, mm -hmm. part time and full time people, and now we are down to three people. Me, you, and here. Jason behind the glass. That's Jason right. Nauer, who's here, you and me, and that's it. Everyone else is working from home, so we're doing what we can, um, you know, to also make sure that we are not continuing to spread this. Right, and you know we're going to see um, the continued changes. Um, one of the things that um, Angela pointed out to us that's going to be happening when she was doing some research on the, on the groceries and, and the grocery stores and things like that, that they're now going to be putting up plexiglass between the cashier and the customer, right? That doesn't necessarily impact the fact that you're handling all the stuff, right. and, and give, you know, but, but it's a start. I mean, yes, anyway, so we're going to see a lot of these different type of things 
going on, and, and we're just going to need to get used to it. Yep. And they've um, added hours for seniors, et cetera. Yeah. Yep. Uh, which seems to be working out pretty well. Uh, have you heard anything on that? or? No, I went to the um, IGA on North Main Street last night, and there were several people there, and but people were friendly, and we were kind of everyone was sort of keeping their distance, and they were open till 8, I think. Um, but I wasn't there earlier in the day. All right. There was stuff there, though. You know, there yeah, the stuff. shelves are starting to. The shelves are starting to. King Cullen the other day, the shelves are starting to replenish. Right. As so. long as everybody just buys what they need. Exactly. We're going to yeah. be fine. Leave one thing at least for the right. other guy, right? Right. Um, what about acts of kindness? We got a lot of stuff going on. I mean, we could we could spend an entire show on everything that's going on. Yesterday, we mentioned. Um, the, the captain from Montauk is giving away the free fish and, right. and it's such we're a likable character. Right. You know, we're, we're working on that video, folks, so and we'll get that up as soon as we can. Um, and I know that Stony Brook University uh, just kicked off a donation drive for PPE, PPE or uh, personal protection equipment um, to try to stay ahead of the demand for that. Um, and the effort has brought in, uh, just in, in since Monday, um, over 40,000 uh, pairs of gloves, uh, 3,000 of the N95 masks, 1,500 gowns, 3,000 masks, and that's according to uh, County Executive Steve Malone. And um, my question to you is, who has these? Well, where, we are they, where are they coming from? We, you mean who has the masks? Yeah, like, like you know, actually, come up with... we have masks. I mean, we, I think we've already donated them. My, my husband went to go find them the other day, but we have them just because of doing stuff around the house. Okay. You know, some so just one, like onesie, that. twosie kind of thing? But it seems like, <laughs> like people twosie. are like, oh, here's a thousand masks. I don't know. Maybe the, the builders must buy them in bulk because I they guess. have to use them. I guess. You know? But then when we talked to Bess Ratray yesterday, she said that the best place to donate them for right now, as far as we know, is, are the firehouses right. in each hamlet. Right. Um, so if you have extra ones, give them there. And the other thing that I've seen, and I'll have more information about this tomorrow, this was just something that I saw on Facebook, was that the people who are sewing the masks, we now have a better idea about where to donate those. And so the minute I get that information, I will I will give that to everybody. And you can look on, um, I think Provisions in Sag Harbor is, is, doing, is going to be collecting. And, um, you know, so if you're making the mask, this is not obviously for – the doctors and the nurses generally, but the people in the hospital. Uh, cleaning staff, whatever. Exactly, all those yeah. necessary employees, and um, so they would have something. And let me just give the number for There's a woman by the name of Joan Dickinson who's handling this information over at Stony Brook University, um, and it's just joan.dickinson, D-I-C-K-I-N-S-O-N, at stonybrook.edu. Uh, E-D-U. E-D-U, yeah. excuse me. Or you can call her at 631 631- dot two one nine dot zero six zero three and something else she's also looking for which i thought was kind of cool that for for a morale reason the the all the healthcare workers and all the people that are just doing these you know 24 hour a day shifts and whatever it is that they're doing um really look forward to like just use your phone turn it sideways use your phone and uh record a 30 second video of thanking them for what they're doing. Oh, fantastic. Right? And that's what she's looking for. Um, you can send it to the same person, joan.dickinson at stonybrook.edu. Okay. I'll add that. And um, they're going to pass it on to the healthcare workers and things like that just to keep the morale up. And, and I mean, it's just nice to get a thank you every yeah, once in a while, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yep. So, um, yeah. Anything else going on locally? Um, I think the the... the the information that we had yesterday about the and the information that the town has given is really, really important that if you have been in New York City, make sure that you self-quarantine and that you really take care to not spread the virus any further. We just m- want to make sure everybody has done that. And really, at this point, we all just sort of need to assume that we've been, we've yeah. been you know, exposed. Exposed is the right word. So we, and so we need to just make sure that we're not giving it to anyone else. So if you go to the beach... Even though, and I even actually asked a friend of mine the other day, let's go for a walk for, at the beach. And then I was like, oh, I can't do that right. with her right now. I can walk to the beach by myself, but I don't want to, because maybe my husband and I can, but she and I can't, because we're, right. you know, and just be careful. It's just, yeah, it's, it's going to be completely different for a little while, and eventually it'll, be, it'll just become the new right. norm. And, and you know what? It is what it is, right? There's, it is nothing we can, there's nothing more we can do. 
So thank you very much, everyone, for, for tuning in today. We're going to have some more information for you tomorrow on uh, where we can where get those can masks. masks. Yep. And, um, and the, the finalization of this um, huge bill that's being pushed through that hopefully is going to help us all financially, and we'll have the details on that. Mm -hmm. But once again, thank you for tuning in to LTV. Um, thank you to Jason behind the glass. Thank you, Morgan. And we will see you all tomorrow.